Two peer-reviewed scientific papers just dropped, and it's shaken the foundations of what we think we know about the sky. Why? Because researchers have found evidence of objects orbiting our Earth, not today, but before any human satellite was ever launched. Now, this isn't some grainy UFO video or about some kind of conspiracy blog. This is a nature-level journal with researchers and scientists speculating that they found evidence of a lost technological civilization, or even worse, that we may be even watched right now. And when you connect this with the days of Noah and with what the Bible calls the powers in the heavenly realms, things begin to make a lot more sense. So in this interview that I've clipped together, you're going to hear from the lead researcher herself, Dr. Beatrice Villarall, and she's going to share about what they found and why they think it is what it is. This is a good one, my friends. Open your mind. Let's follow the evidence where it goes, because we do not want to be deceived in these last days. Hit that like, like button. Help me get that out there to more people, and let me know what you think in the comments. Let's check it out. The reason we're bringing Beatrice back today is because there's been a new development. Beatrice, welcome to Reality Hello. Check. What's happening? What's the news? Uh, well, there are actually some good news. So we had two papers that were exciting. One about the transient UFO and new connection um, by, by Stephen Bruel and myself. And the second paper where we are searching for NHI artifacts by looking for things that look like um, um, solar reflections. And uh, like and satellites in pre Sputnik images. And both these two papers have now passed peer review and they are accepted for they are accepted for publication. In fact, they're published. Deal. So they got published uh, um, on Monday. You've basically got an article which has survived the scrutiny of all of the peer review experts, essentially an article suggesting that there are artificial constructed objects that were reflective, specular, in Earth orbit before humans sent up objects into space. Exactly. So it's fun. It's very exciting to have these Now, you were expecting to get shot wow. down, weren't you? you? You were expecting quite an aggressive um, response from debunkers and peer reviewers. Was it a tough, You'd think was so. it a tough go to get through the peer review? It was really tough for this paper with um, um, NHI artifacts, but the referee was constructive and curious. And I think that's the golden thing when you are talking, like talking to a curious person, they do propose good tests and you can try and you can check. So it was uh, difficult, challenging, but great. Mm. I enjoyed it. Well, congratulations. Process. I mean, I, it's very rare mm. to get anything relating to UFOs, UAPs, unidentified objects into a peer-reviewed journal, especially journals as prestigious as the ones you're talking about. And that really speaks for that what we are dealing with yeah. are solar reflections from very flat, uh, very reflective objects in so geosynchronous orbits. Doctor, tell me, what could this be? So before she does that, I'm going to take you to the journals themselves, and I, I want you to see them, and I want to talk about them just briefly, because then she's going to say what she thinks they are, and then she's going to tell you how many she thinks there are up there, and it'll blow your mind. And so let me go real quickly to the journal um, so I can share it with you. We're going to do this first one. Right here. And uh, so this one is First Polymer Sky Survey. This is a, a big survey they did back in the 40s and 50s where they took a, um, a plate capture at about 50 minutes of the sky recording anything that glowed or moved. And then since they were able to digitize these images, given scientists today a window into how the sky looked back then, so this is before space debris or satellites or anything like that. So it says in this article that they short, showed um, short flashes of light, which they're calling transients. So when you hear her say transients, she's talking about short flashes of lights that appear during a single exposure. They hunted for three or more flashes that lined up in a straight row, which could mean something even moving across the sky as it's reflecting Okay, the sunlight. And as you heard her say, they're flat objects or they're not like space rocks or anything like that should, that should actually be able to reflect 
light. I mean, it's shiny objects, okay? So if you saw them today, they would have assumed that these were satellites, but this was way before there were satellites even in space. So um, this one, that's kind of really what this one is talking about, but this other journal is a little more in depth. Okay, this, this one here, um, Scientific Reports, Transients in the Palomar Observatory Sky Survey. Okay, I'll put up the abstract there, but this is kind of cool what they did with this one. They actually were using those same photos that we just talked about and were wondering, are these flashes of light connected to nuclear weapons testing or maybe they were connected to UAP or UFO sightings? So that's what they did. And they took 2,718 days comparing these things day by day, nuclear test, UAP reports, and transient lights. And what they found was, is that anytime there was a nuclear test, these transient lights lit up the sky. And anytime there was UFOs in the sky, there were more of these transients on those sky plates. So for each extra UFO report, the number of transients rose by 85 or 8.5%. And when there was a nuclear test, 45%. And I've always heard that whenever these, whatever these UFO are, whatever these UFOs are, when there's a nuclear test, those UFOs show up in the sky. There's plenty of people that have spoken about this, have seen it, and I believe there's even video evidence of it. So what they found was is more nukes equals more flashes in the sky, more if you more UFO reports equals more flashes too. So it's showing that this is beyond random chance. There's something odd going on there and it's and it's empirical. I mean this is evidence-based research. And so I'm going to let her finish her interview. We're going to talk about it and I want to make a biblical connection for you because I'm telling you, we've been lied to. There is a liar. Okay, Satan's a liar. He's a father of lies. The Bible says and so I don't honestly believe the narrative all the time. I'm not going to believe what people tell me just because they're considered an expert or because they hold a title. I'm going to look at what the Bible says. So even what she says or what she believes, I'm still going to hold it to the scripture. Let's continue. What are these objects? Well, these are uh, objects before Sputnik 1 when humans had nothing up there. And these things, no matter what they are, they need to be really flat reflective like a mirror. And I personally don't know anything natural that produces, and that looks like that, that fulfills these requirements. And so- am I, am I correct in saying there are literally tens of thousands of these objects that you've detected? We see uh, that roughly 35,000 transients are belonging to this kind of category, but that That's is just for the Northern hemisphere, which means that we would need to have around 70,000 of transients around, I mean, for the whole Earth. And from that, we can estimate that um, maybe tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of objects around the Earth must have been there. Now, we know that they were there in mm -hmm. pre-Sputnik 1950s. Yes. What do we know about whether they're still there? Can we rule out the possibility or the probability that they're still there in geosynchronous orbit? I have no idea because if these are what I think they are, I mean, if these are artificial objects which the signatures are pointing towards, I have no idea what they could have done or if they are there still. I would assume they're there still. But it's a reasonable conclusion, isn't it, Doctor, mm. that if these are artificial objects, yes. some civilization has constructed them? Yes, I would say so. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9 through 10, I want to throw this in there, does say, what has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. I mean, it's not ours. This is massive. You, you are the author or the lead author of two papers which essentially suggest that there are artificial constructed objects in geosynchronous Earth orbit in the 1950s before humans sent up satellites. And to this day, we don't know if those objects are still there, but they are indicative of something constructed. Isn't that exciting? Now, Beatrice, mm. I'm going to invite you to do something that scientists don't normally do. <laughs> I, want, I want you to speculate. Okay. There's obviously there's obviously something that you've captured that was there in the 1950s. 
What do you think it might be? So there are different plausible explanations. One is maybe that there is something we don't know about the human civilization. And maybe maybe we had a few rounds already. And uh, it, so, it, so it's maybe one there's a prior human civilization that was wiped out as people like Graham Hancock talk about, you know, the or the Bible. I mean, Graham Hancock, yes, but Noah, hello, the days of Noah, the flood wiped out humanity and we do not know anything hardly about civilization before that but what we do know i'm going to share with you because if you haven't heard about it it's wild young That's Darius, so 12 and a half thousand years ago maybe there was a prior human civilization and a lot of these megalithic monuments we see on the planet are in fact remnants of a previous truth possibly human civilization that that's a good one uh or, and an alternative uh, explanation Maybe it's non-human uh, probes that are um, that were sent here, like Patrick Jackson. He has this beautiful uh, suggestion of a surveillance network, and I think that kind of it looks very logical. If you have another civilization that is capable of constructing these probes, why wouldn't they send here lots of them? Mm. So, so that's a possibility. Uh, we're actually, just so our audience know, we're going to be bringing Patrick on the show very soon. I've been talking to Patrick for quite some time, and we're, we're going to be doing an interview with him talking about his theory, his hypothesis that essentially these metallic spheres that are being seen all over the planet are some kind of Earth monitoring or defense system by a possible non-human intelligence civilization that's keeping an eye on the planet. Now, if this sounds odd to you, I mean, well, it should because it's it's completely different than than what mainstream media is telling us about our past, you know, about what's what's real right now. But gosh, if you've had your ears open and eyes open in the last 15 years, you have been hearing about all these UFO sightings. OK, like you can't ignore these objects that are flying in space and doing crazy things, defying physics. And now they're talking about like 70,000 or 100,000 of them that might exist in our sky and look like stars, but really they're artificial objects that reflect light. I mean, what are we talking about here right now? I want to talk about it according to the scripture. Now, I was talking with an elder of mine, a, a person I love and trust, and I'm going to say this for her sake so she understands that, you know, where I stand on this. Uh, I don't believe in aliens. I don't believe that there's aliens from another um, planet. I don't believe that there's another you know, organisms that exist that maybe have traveled space for many light years to get here. I don't believe any of that. But what I do believe, I do believe in Genesis 6. I do believe that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. You should watch, you should look this up. You should look this up for yourself. But the, the sons of God, the Bible says, saw the daughters of men and saw that they were absolutely beautiful. And they took for them any of the of wives that they chose. And they had children by them. They had children. You have sons of God from heaven, heavenly beings, okay, that exist, come down and had somehow relations with women and was able to bore these other race of beings called the Nephilim. The Bible talks about these being the mighty men of old, men of renown. I mean, these were giants. These were massive creatures that existed before the flood. And it's one of the reasons why the flood was, why it happened, because they corrupted the whole earth. They were evil. Okay, but then you also have Second Peter chapter two, verse four and five. It says, "For if God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell, if He did not spare the ancient world, but pre uh, but preserved Noah." Okay, so there are angels that also are sinning. They're doing something wrong, and and, and so what did they do? Who knows? Maybe they maybe they influenced also the earth and maybe they had contact with humans i mean we hear all the time in ancient myths and legends which i'm going to share with you here in a second also about these gods uh, as a kid i'm learning about all these gods that they used to that, that man used to follow and and we were painted as like idiots like we're stupid you know we would make this statue of this god and have all this story about this god but then we'd say it was just all made up were they really or were they the fallen angels or you know the Bible talks about how the dragon swept out a third of the stars. You're talking a third of the angels fell. Well, where'd they fall to? The earth, okay? Um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual force of evil in the heavenly realms. So the Bible is very clear 
that there is more to this world than meets the eye. There are angels, there are ancient civilizations, and even like what they said, how in the world did they build these megalithic structures that we found all over the earth? Now, I want to share with you that even Sumerian and Babylon and Babylonian have their own flood myths, okay, like in the Epic of Gilgamesh. It's one of the oldest stories ever discovered. It talks about a great flood that was sent by the gods, okay? And you also have the Sumerian Watchers, if you've not heard of that. It's a very old story about these semi-divine, half-god, half-human uh, beings that descend from heaven and they watch us and they corrupt us and they give us certain, certain like writings and architecture and astronomy. This also matches what the book of Enoch says. I know that's not in scripture, but what's crazy is the book of Jude quotes Enoch. You have the age of the Titans in Greek mythology. Like before Zeus, you have these Titans, these race of giants, these powerful beings who rebelled against the higher gods and they were overthrown and thrown into Tartarus. And which is the same word that I just quoted from 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. They were chained in Tartarus. Very odd, the connection. You got Egyptian flood myths, Meso uh, Mesoamerican legends. You have the things of like the Aztecs, the Mayas, multiple world ages destroyed by floods, fire, and darkness. And they talk about these sky beings that came out of the sky. I always am asking the question, what is the truth? The name of this YouTube channel is Truth Be Told. Look, I, I can't tell you that I know exactly what happened in the days of Noah, but I'm telling you, it's not like, it's not like, hey, humans just did some bad things and God got upset and flooded the earth. No, it was very bad. It was very bad. And let me, re let me read that quote from the beginning from Ecclesiastes because Jesus does say that as was in the days of Noah, so shall it be the coming of the Son of Man. So whatever was going on in the days of Noah, it's going to happen again. They had satellites possibly back then, okay, orbiting the earth back in the pre human satellite days, okay, back in the 40s and 50s, but, you know, they had satellites orbiting the earth then, and Lord knows for how long. Now we have our own satellites up in space. What has been done is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. So, I just wanted to make this quick video. I'm going to end it now. I don't want the video to be too long. Um, take it in. Pray about this. Search your heart and just be ready for anything because I have a hunch and belief that in the near future, at some point, there is going to be some sort of a massive event that is going to probably bring about a complete change in worldview and it's going to bring about a paradigm shift that's going to deceive even the elect. It's what the Bible calls about the great delusion. So be awake, uh, you know, read the scriptures, draw close to Jesus. He'll never lead you astray, but we have to know the word and we have to not let anyone steer our hearts from Jesus. No matter what anyone says, I don't care if someone comes out of a, a spaceship and says, I'm Jesus, don't believe it. Okay. When Jesus comes, you will know there'll be no doubt at all. Okay. Um, cause even in this great delusion, the Bible says that even the elect will be deceived if he doesn't cut the time short. So like I said, read your word, draw close to Christ, and let's stick together as his church. Hit that like button if this spoke to you at all, um, and also subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'd love to have you with me on this journey of truth, and absolutely let me know what you think about in the comments. I read as many as I can, and I appreciate the community that the Lord has brought. We'll see you next time. Truth be told.